Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you wanted anything. But, uh, oh, sweet. But yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a huge proponent of this. So the, uh, the other thing is percentages. Golf, people have this misconception that golf is a game of perfection. It's not a game of perfection, it's a game of misses. It's how the person that misses the least is going to win every single time. Why my best so good? He doesn't miss. When he does, he misses a little bit. He very rarely does something stupid. Um, so you got to take into account percentages. That's I play percentages. If I step up to a hole where I was obviously I'm more comfortable right-handed throwing a hyzer shot, so that comes back left. If I step up, step up to a hole and I've got a four-foot gap, 50 feet off the box, throw a hyzer, and I've got a 10-foot gap, 50 feet off the box, throw an anhyzer. Probably gonna take that anhyzer, even though I'm less comfortable with that shot. My percentage of making it, especially making the gap, is much higher because of because of the size of the gap. And depending on wind, that affects it too. You know, you may want to throw a flick instead of a backhand because of the way the wind's pushing. So there's, a, I'm a huge proponent of percentage shots. And think about every variable when you step up to every shot. Make the decision before you throw it. You've got a huge right to left wind. Well, if I throw this out there, that might be up and carry and go. I throw a flick, chances are it's gonna sit down and slam. So let me do that, it's a better, it's a higher percentage shot. So um, basically what I'm talking about is, like if I'm stepping up here, and I'm aiming for that tuft of grass, and this is my shot, like that's my basket, I am probably gonna throw a disc up close to the top of the trees, about 40, 50 feet right. Because I know that this is overstable, so when I flip over, I know that it's kind of hard around the basket. Of course, I sawed it off, but you see what the disc does. It comes down and that's it. And so, try that a little bit. More like that. A little short, but it's right on line. So, that's the idea. Now, you can throw different shots. Um, you know, I've got a, uh, I've got a verdict here. Verdict is an overstable mid -range. I can throw this flat and let it come in. For me, that's a, that's a good shot. Still a hyzer shot, um, but when you throw something flat, it's usually a little harder to control distance. When you're throwing something more up and down at an angle, the disc is always fighting to the ground. It's always trying to get to the ground. So you, it's usually easier to learn if you're throwing distance on a hyzer angle distances. You can figure out real quick, uh, okay, if I can keep it on this line every time, if I throw it straight, it'll go 200 feet. If I throw it 10 feet in the air, it'll go 250 feet. If I throw it 20 feet in the air, it'll go 300 feet. Does that make sense? So it's yeah. easier to pinpoint distances that way as opposed to throwing a disc flat. You have to throw discs flat sometimes, obviously. But once you learn, once you learn to control the distance with a hyzer shot, and it's more height than anything, honestly, it's your game will improve drastically because all of a sudden, I know what distance I'm throwing. I know what shot I'm throwing. There's no variables, you're not adding anything to it. When you throw flat shots with like butters and stuff, you risk turning it over a little bit, it drifts, or you risk worm burning it. If you keep it too high, it falls off left. There's a lot more variables in life. But like a verdict, I can throw it to the right about 20 feet and it'll come back at it. And I sawed it off again. But yeah, same consistent hyzer shot. That's what I'm looking for. Whereas if I take a putter, yeah, I can throw a putter that far, but I'm bringing a lot of variables into play. Like I said, get the nose up a little, a little bit, it's not going to make it. Going a little nose down, it's going to warm burn, it's going to die. If you just touch it too much angle on it, it'll turn right, form your real heart. So there's too many variables, whereas with an overstable disc, I can throw it the same way, it's going to do the same thing every single time. I don't have to worry about it doing any of that stuff. So, like a putter, that's nice and great, that's straight. I mean, look at that, that's perfect. Like, man, that's awesome. What if I have a five mile an hour headwind? What's that putter gonna do? Go flip. Yeah, flip it, right. So, why look at a situation like this and go, I got a tailwind, I'm gonna throw a putter. Well, if I had a headwind, I'd throw a spike hydro with another disc. Why not do the same thing both times? So you're staying in that comfort zone, you're more consistent, you don't have to worry about different things happening with the disc. It just makes it a lot more, a lot more consistent. Um, and it flicks the same way, you know? Same thing, just hide. So, does that make sense? Like, that's yeah. one thing I see a lot of people doing is they get one disc and they go, I'm gonna make this do it. That's great, that's fine if you wanna do that. You'll become a better golfer in the long run for it and you need to be practicing that. 
but for this for right now and for getting yourself better at the moment you need to focus on the shot right in front of you you know you don't get better at ball golf by going out there and trying to trying to make things cut and make things hook and put backspin on you get better by going out and hitting it straight and hitting it straight and hitting it straight and hitting it straight over and over again once you have that down then you start to work on the other thing does that make yeah. yeah. Repetition. Repetition, yeah. repetition, repetition. Uh, when I'm getting ready for a tournament, I will putt usually at least 30 minutes a day. Not all at one time, maybe 10, 15 minutes at a time, a couple of times during the day. Um, and it's repetition. And when you start to get to the point where you stop thinking about it and you just kind of go into la la land, stop. So you just stop because you're, you're checked out, you're gone mentally. It's bad practice for me. That makes sense? Yeah. Any questions about any of that? You can pick up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like a oh, 14. Yeah, 14. That's a good. That's a great example. It's in the short right now. Real hard around the corner. That's what 140 feet, maybe 150 feet. That's a putter, right? I mean, that's easy. Throw a putter around the corner. I throw a justice, which is the most stable mid-range ever produced, in my opinion. Because I could throw that thing flat or, you know, on a hyzer, and it's going to do the same thing every single time. Whereas if I take a putter, and I throw it on a hyzer, and I barely tweak my wrist, what's that putter going to do? Boop, it's going to stand up, go straight. Whereas that justice is always going to turn left. It, it masks flaws, and it masks mistakes, which for tournament rounds for rounds where you're playing or something that's very important you have to learn how to throw putters you have to learn how to make this do different shots otherwise you'll just mask your mistakes all throughout your playing career and you'll never get you'll reach a point where you just don't get any better because you can't throw other shots but you need to be throwing the consistent shots so with 14 in mind for example like exactly what you're saying but instead of throwing a putter Range, I'll throw an open stable driver just because I know exactly where it's going to go and possibly get the skip. Exactly. Uh, which is, 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 there a, is there a flaw in throwing <coughs> driver short range just because you know what they're going to do? No, no. Um, before the Justice, I threw a triple X. <laughs> when I was with this craft, I threw an extreme. They're technically drivers. They're seven, eight, nine speed drivers. But I threw those for, like, I threw a triple X there or a felon constantly. And I'd take some off of it, but I got that nice, consistent turn every single time. I didn't have to worry about, well, if I tweak my wrist a little bit, it's still going to turn. It's not going to pop up and fly straight like a putter would. So that, I don't think that kind of answers the question. Yeah. There's no reason to not throw a driver. Simon Lazat, I don't know if you knew who that is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 80 million feet. Um, he, he, uh, he, until last year, I think he only had one mid in the bag and he never threw it, ever. Did not throw mid He threw putters for like straight mid shots and for like windy up shots or hooks. He just threw PD2, which is I think like kind of like Firebird, Firebird, <coughs> Firebird or something like that. Anyway, he threw that. That's all he did. Throw PD2 every single time. PD2, PD2, PD2. And he was good, but he got out on tour over here and realized, oh crap, I've got 350 feet of the ceiling. I can't make a putter. You know, stay in the air that long, my PD2 is going to hang off. So he's starting to put mids in his bag for that reason. But he still throws all the time drivers for upshots, like that, all the time. Like, even for me, you know, I throw a driver right here. If I had this same shot to that tough to grass in turn, I'd throw a driver. You know, I'd throw that high spike we were talking about. I'd feel a lot more comfortable with that <laughs> than I do throwing it straight and tweaking it out. So. Gotcha. It's, it's all shot selection. We'll talk a little bit about that real quick. So here, if I landed at the tuft of grass where the short spin is, I'm going to this basket. Um, where's the most open side of the basket? The left side. Right. Now I'm a lot more comfortable throwing backhand, but I can throw a flick decently. I'm throwing a flick into that. Why? Because as long as I put it wide enough, even if I hit a tree, I'm going to be within 15, 20 feet. Whereas if I try to throw something straight at it, or even hyzer, there's a chance it could flip over, or the hyzer could catch a tree and fall way back over there on that side. So you, when you step up to a shot, you have to look at wind. Wind's important. That's probably the most important thing. People just ignore it. <laughs> um, wind 
and variables around the basket. Like, what is it that's around the basket that's going to cause me issues? Is the gap bigger on the left side? Is the gap bigger on the right side? Is the gap bigger straight? Where can I throw this shot where it has the highest percentage of chance of getting to the basket? As a pro, that's my thought. That's the thing. I don't get aces. I think I've got like 15, 16 total ever. I don't. I don't ace. Like, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like most, most of the pros that have been playing as long as I have have hundreds. Um, because I play, started playing pro so quick, I realized really quick I don't want to ace the basket. If I miss, where am I going? Way, way past. I'm going to throw it 20 feet short and let it hop up to it. I'm going to make more money in the long run. Like, so you have to take all that into account. So for like this show one, I'm going to throw a flick at it every single time because it's more open on the left side. So it's just a variable you have to look at in every basket. Where's where are your potential problems? 16 back here, a great example. If you throw, everyone knows 16. I think you throw the big up and over shot. And for me, I just throw the big anti out over all the stuff on the left. Yeah. My mistake on that hole is to end up too far right. I end up over there a lot more than I do left. It's a lot easier to get out of trouble from over there. You can save a par from over there. Whereas if you go left, yeah. sorry. Um, <laughs> So that's my mistake, is to turn it over. So when I throw a shot like that, I'm going, I'm going to try to throw this. If I throw it perfectly, it works out perfectly. But my mistake is to turn it over too much. That's what I think of when I think of shots. This upshot right here, if I throw that, my mistake is to leave it too tight on that upshot. The chances are it'll get in, hit the trees, and fall down some putt. Or if I grip lock it and change it wide, I'm you know 40 feet out here with the wind and the trees that are low hanging, and it's going to be a harder putt. So you have to think about where's your mistake. Every single shot, where is your mistake? What's the mistake I can make? You throw the shot that you want to throw with that mistake being the bailout. Does that make sense? So it's like it's like in golf, you see that a lot. Uh, you know, when they land on greens, you know, okay, the greens five feet from the putter's edge, you know, and the bat and the hole's five feet from the green's edge. So I've got ten feet from the hole to the green to the water. I'm gonna hit my shot with a little bit of a cut so it goes towards the hole. But I'm going to start it farther left. So that way, if I overcut it or if I saw it off a little bit, it will still end up on the green and give me a chance. Where if I hit it perfectly, it will come in perfect. That's why they hit cuts and hooks all the time, cuts and draws. It's for that same reason. Whereas if you line that shot up straight at the flag stick and you're off to the right by five feet, that ball is going in the water. It's the same process with this ball. You need to, you need to think about where are your mistakes on every single shot. So that's probably the difference with the pros is they're constantly thinking about my mistake is short, my mistake is left, my mistake is right, whatever. There are times you need to step up and just say, I'm just going to do it. But for the most part, you need to think about where your mistakes lie and where I can make the mistake and not get into trouble.